In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an oil and filter change on your Volkswagen Golf petrol engine. Now, this what you're going to need here is uh, all your filters, as you would, spark plugs and any filters you want to change. Um, and also, you're going to need a, a socket set, some sort of socket set. So, um, once you've got these few things, we can start working. And uh, yeah, not to forget some oil. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure the car is warm, because this is going to help the oil to drain easier from the engine. So this will free it up by making it warm, not hot because you, you may end up getting on your skin or on your hands. So now jack up the car at, at a secure jacking point. Once you've jacked it up, make sure you secure it with some axle snaps underneath some sturdy parts of the car. Now this could be the subframe or anywhere just as strong as it or the jacking points. The key here is safety first. So make sure you've got it in a good location. You know, make sure the jack comes down slowly to test it out. Now it's up to you to leave the jack under the car as a backup, but I wanted full access and I was happy with where the jacking stand was actually located. I, I knew it was strong enough and it was going to be safe for what I was going to do. Now to drain this car you have to drain it from the sump plug itself. You don't have the option of draining it out of the tank, out of the um, dipstick like we did on the diesel car. So you have to drain this from the sump plug itself. Now the sump plug is a 19mm spanner or socket, whatever you might choose. Now it's aluminium and steel, so you have to be very careful with it. You don't want to abuse it. This will crack, this will cross thread, this will do all that stuff if you don't do it right. So what you have what I what I chose to do was loosen it with the ratchet, got some got a bit of power behind it and loosened with the ratchet, and then I did it loosen it. Then once it was loose, once I'd broken the tightness itself. I undid it by hand because I thought this, this is the safest way. It's, you cannot cross thread anything or chew anything up by hand. So I always, in this whole video, you will see that I do it by hand first until the stage where it, I can't do it no more. And I'll do the last quarter turns or three quarter turns by a ratchet. Now, once you've got it out, because the oil was warm, it comes out like this. If it's not warm, it will be very sticky and treacle like. And you don't really want that situation because you'll be there all day waiting for it to drain and it won't drain from some of the more um, intricate parts of the engine so make sure your engine's warm and then decide to do this and also this, that's another reason of not having it too hot because if you have it too hot this will burn you it's oil it's coming out of an engine so um, the idea is to have it warm but not hot so if your car is hot let it sit down for a little while and cool down until you can do this now this is a view from underneath the engine. That's the oil filter. That's on the very front of the engine, but it's a little bit hidden from above. If you can see there, it's right next to the engine man it's the exhaust manifold. So once again, you don't want it too hot. Another reason for not having it too hot. Now this took a 27 millimeter socket. Now once again, once I've got it loose, the rest is all done by hand. But it's very simple. It's very easy. Make sure you've got some sort of bucket or container to collect to collect all the leakages that's going to come for it. But I'm actually working from the top, even though this is a shot from the bottom. So it's very simple. I dropped it, as you can see. It gets oily and slippery, so make sure you've got a, a rag at hand also. Save you a lot of problems. Once the filter is removed, the next thing to do is to remove the car off the axle stands and get it flat. Now, this is the only way it's going to drain all of the oil thoroughly from the engine. If it's not flat, it's going to be harboring in corners and leaning to the sides, and it's going to be collecting pools in parts of the engine. So you have to make sure that you get this car on a flat surface to thoroughly drain out all the oil. Once you're happy with the oil being drained from the engine, the next thing to do is to prepare the oil filter. Now, I always prepare all my filters by priming them up with at least some of the, the fluid that's going to actually go in the car. So, prime up the filter and then use a little bit of the oil to just smother around the rubber seals. Now, this just makes a much better sealing for, for when you come to put it on. So, you know, everyone does it. I've done it for years and it's always worked. So, I think it's a very good thing to do. Now, while the car's on the floor, I chose to do it from underneath because it's easy to see from underneath when you're actually putting it on but it's much harder to do from the top if that makes sense so removal you can kind of do blind and by a feel but actually putting it on you've got to do it from underneath next thing we have to do is remove the engine cover 
Now these are held in with five millimeter Allen key bolts. As you can see, I'm using my socket to take it off. One of mine was actually broken, but I guess it's life. But this is what you've got to do is remove this initial um, engine cover before you can start getting access to taking off the spark plug. Once the cover's off, loosen up the uh, wires. This is what holds that little plastic guide and um, start to pull out the plugs themselves. Remember not to actually yank on the plugs themselves because they will break and then you your car will run funny. So then um, loosen all the um, spark plugs. You know, use the bolt, what, like, I, like I said previously, the philosophy earlier, loosen it with the uh, spanner and then undo the rest by hand. It saves any drama or anything, any kind of problems. Now this is the new plus spark plug going in, as you can see. Excellent quality. Now it's good to get the right quality um, spark plugs for yourself. There's no point in shortcutting here. It's, the difference isn't huge. And if they are expensive, they're expensive for a reason. You have to remember these car manufacturers spend millions on finding what's the right thing. So if you can spend a little bit more in this area, I think you should because it does serve. Now, as you can see in this picture, these do take a beating. So, you know, these are looking a bit rough. They're not going to spark as good as them new ones. So it's important to change them and make sure you've got the right stuff. Spark plugs are uh, very responsible for how eco economical your car runs. So it's important to get these right. Now, when putting these back in, if you just like you saw me there, I put it in by hand and tighten it by hand. Now, it's impossible for me to cross thread it doing it in this system. So make sure you follow the same because I've cross threaded it before and it's an expensive, annoying, upsetting procedure. Avoid it by any cost. But once you've got it to a, a, a hand tight, we can't tighten no more. Just get a ratchet and neatly tie it, tighten it. Now you are supposed to do this to torque spec, but I'm using my experience because I didn't have a torque spec, torque wrench at hand. So, you know, if you feel a bit confident, you can do it like this. And if you have got the other stuff and the money and the equipment for the other stuff, then you can do it the, the official way. Now this is where the air filter is located. Um, it's, it's very simple stuff. All you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. And I think it's about six or seven screws. Once you screw them off, you gain access to the inside of the filter. Once you're inside the actual filter housing itself, it's very, very easy stuff. It's just pull off. It actually lifts completely off and then you, it's easy. <laughs> I can't say no more than that. When putting in a new filter, make sure it's seated properly. Make sure you've got a complete vacuum. You know, you're going to have to fumble around a little bit and feel around, but, you know, do it properly and then it'll work properly. Once it's back on, very, very simple stuff. We've been here before. Just screw it back on, tighten it up. It's not going to cause no problems, you know. Check the seal still at the same time. Make sure it isn't being pinched and you should be done. Now onto the pollen filter or the cabin filter. This is something that's very, very regularly overlooked, but you know, once again, much like my fuel filter um, video, you've got to realize the importance of this. You are actually breathing the air that this brings in. This is your filter to the air that comes into your car. So this can be responsible for a lot of allergies, um, breathing issues because it harbors, it harbors um, germs and bacteria and allergens and all that sort of stuff, you know, so it's very important to change this. It's once again, it's one of them things that no one really ever pays attention to, but it's actually quite important to do. I mean, as you can see in this video, the state of it, that is not meant to be gray. You know, it's not meant to be gray. So, you know, make sure you remove it. This comes off with just a couple of clips, like you push them back and it, and it frees up like that, as you can see. So once again, very easy stuff. It's a five minute job maximum. So, you know, once you got it out, get the new one in. Here again is an example of actually what's harboring inside your, your pollen filter or your cabin filter. Now, as you can agree, no matter how well, how good a filter this is, this isn't filtering everything. So, you know, do yourself a favor and make sure stuff like this is changed because this is where you can get I don't know if you've got hay fever or anything like that. This is where it's going to be coming from and stemming from. Now, just a quick picture to show you the difference of what it should be and what it shouldn't be. This has clearly been in there some time. Um, and, you know, for some for such a simple thing, I think in England, this cost about £8, £7 or £8. 
um, it's a very cheap um, uh, removal or replacement make an effort to do it very easy very simple when you're fitting this onto the actual frame itself make sure you've got it in the on the right way because these filters are actually directional so make sure you get it the right way once it's on it's very simple again like I said a five minute job stop you from asthma attacks and hay fever and eczema and whatever else this can harbor inside that little paper field that we're breathing in when we're driving um, once, you've, once you've got it on it's just slipping it back in and, and all simple stuff clipping your protector or whatever you want to call this and screw it in Okay, once all your spark plugs are done and your air filters have been done, it's on to start putting things back together. Now, this is the good part because you're nearly done, thank God. Um, real simple, uh, put that plastic guide down. That guide's quite important. It tells you which order them leads go in. If them all, if, if them leads don't go in the right order, your car will be missing and then it's, it's, it's Krypton Factor or whatever you want to call it to, to try and work it out how this goes back together so you know make sure you get it make sure you, you use that guide system to put it down now the plastic panel just comes goes on the reverse you do need to take that off because it won't go on otherwise not without a fight anyway this is the easiest way and put your five mil bolts your five mil allen allen bolts back into where they're supposed to go now once all the top part is done and you put everything back together it's time to put the sump plug back on now, once again, remember what I said earlier. This is aluminium. The bolt is steel. It's a bad mix if you get this wrong. So, like I've been preaching throughout the whole of this video, and for, for most of my videos, I think, first thing you do is push, um, uh, screw it in with your by hand. It's impossible to cross thread it by hand. So, once you screwed it in by hand to as tight as you can get it, if you don't have a torque wrench, just do it, give it another maybe another quarter of a turn or half a turn that's all it should need and if it needs a little bit more give it a little bit more but don't try and twist and twist until you crack it or or cross thread it because that is a whole different video that i'm not really prepared to make at the moment so remember to be safe remember to be you know careful and not to damage your car and cost yourself any money just by doing this so once you've got the sump plug back in you've got to fill it up with oil um I generally fill it up and then check the dipstick, fill it up, check the dipstick. Once you're happy with the levels on the dipstick, um, you start the car, let it flush, let it go all around the, the car, the engine itself, so you don't get a false reading, and then you check the dipstick again until you're happy. After that second check, everything should be fine. Unfortunately, my camera ran out of battery and I didn't get that extra footage. This is why I'm telling you. But I hope that all helps. It's very simple, very easy. You can save yourself a load of money and um yeah learn something so like i said hope it helps comment rate subscribe share tell me what you want if i can help you and um hopefully i can speak to you soon thank you